Hey, how's it going? Dylan here, and welcome to this video on my little material that I've created for anamorphic depth of field in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so, some of you might be familiar, I've been posting on Twitter um, about this stuff for a while now, and uh, this is basically kind of a stopgap release, um, a little non-engine code related um, addition, which I'm posting to Marketplace, and this is basically a post-process material uh, version of my anamorphic depth of field implementation, um, which, uh, yes, I'm still working towards a code plugin, uh, but, you know, that stuff takes time to learn and figure out things like that. So, without further ado, let's have a look at how this works. So, here we are in Unreal Engine 5, in the city sample scene that they provided the, from the amazing Matrix demo, and basically, um, when you purchase this, you get like this little folder here called anamorphic doff, which is just here. And basically, it's pretty simple. Um, it comes with material parameter collections. So this is a kind of, for those of you who don't know what a material parameter collection is, it's uh, basically a collection of parameters, um, which is very easy to keyframe in a sequence because you can literally just drag this into a sequence and then set these parameters so I, that, that's my kind of ideal way of controlling parameters and materials. So as you can see, this, um, this particular implement, implementation of anamorphic depth of field is not a physically based one. So it doesn't pay attention to any of your camera settings in Unreal because it's not a code plugin, it's just a post-process. And I'm not sure how that would work uh, to do that. But um, if you're after something that integrates completely, then that you'd have to wait for whenever I get around to figuring out the code plugin stuff. Uh, but anyway, this one does actually have some benefits being not physically based because you can really customize it. You can say you want really out of focus stuff in the foreground, but you don't really want any in the distance. So you can kind of art direct it a bit more. Um, so it, it does have advantages. Um, so as you can see, we've got a bunch of different kind of um, uh, non-physically based attributes here. We've got aperture, which is not doesn't necessarily mean an actual aperture of a camera. It's just a kind of parameter that acts like it. Um, we've got uh, controls for how much far focus there is, um, basically powering that as well. So you can kind of get a sharper transition if you wanted, like a more tilt shift look or um, or the opposite way, smoothing it out. So it's like kind of like a really gradual transition. And we've got the same stuff for the near stuff down the bottom. We've got just a general radius multiplier to make it larger and smaller. We've got uh, depth blur. So basically this kind of blurs the, the depth, the scene depth, so that we don't get sharp edges when foreground objects are in front of an out of focus area. It kind of helps a little bit with that. And we've also got samples. So that's kind of your quality um, multiplier. So um, cranking this does produce a nicer result, but it does cost a lot in performance when you start going right up there. So first thing you need to do is find your main post-process volume in the scene. And um, basically we head down to post-process materials under rendering features. And you want to click the little plus button and we'll add an asset reference and basically here we can add our materials so if we go up back up one folder and under materials now we've got two options here we've got after tone map and before tone map and I'm gonna show you what the difference is here basically a post-process material um, it does its work uh, somewhere in the um, kind of rendering pipeline of Unreal um, and you can, there's two different results that you can really get with this depth of field between them that I thought I would include. Um, so the first one is being after tone map. So we'll have a look at that. And here we go. You can see we've straight away got some crazy uh, anamorphic depth of field going. Um, so the main difference between these two materials, number one, the after tone map uh, provides a much more stable image. Uh, so less flickering because um, it's done after all the tone mapping. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a smoother, softer image. Um, so definitely a look you might want to be going for. And if I just come over here and we'll... Alright, so once we've added that material on there, 
um, I've moved the camera into position and kind of fiddled with the settings a bit. Um, as you can see, we've got kind of a, a car here, which is in focus. And essentially the background is out of focus in like kind of nice anamorphic ovals. You can even exaggerate it a bit here. If we kind of push it up, maybe 1.5, just to not get too crazy. Uh, so yeah, for a wide angle lens, this is actually extremely shallow, but you, it's, um, I'm, I'm exaggerating it so you can get the idea. Now, as you can see, this image is really stable because it's the um, after tone mapping version. Uh, I'll just show you the before tone mapping version and why you might want to use it. So if you have, um, what I'll do, I'll drag it on here. So as you can see with the before tone mapping version, um, it is a lot less stable, a lot more flickery. So when rendering this out, you would want to kind of up more samples, um, like more temporal samples to kind of smooth this this um, out or, or even or super high res or something like that. But um, I guess the benefit of using this version is that if you do have highlights and you want to get those really popping highlight bokeh, uh, then this version does kind of do that. The other version does it as well, but they have to be much brighter for it to work. So for instance, I've been using this one for the really sunny uh, bits with bright highlights because it really makes them pop, um, especially in the out of focus areas. But the using the um, to after tone map one um, will work just as well um, for when there's a really bright thing. And if anything, that one, the after tone map one will generate a nicer, obviously, if you're using it for gameplay or anything like that, anything that's real time um, is going to, that one's going to yield a much better result than this because um, the temporal jitter is going to uh, go a bit crazy sometimes when there's a lot of small detail in the distance. So yeah, that's my uh, anamorphic, simple, simple anamorphic depth of field uh, material shader. Um, yeah, if you enjoy it, please leave a review on, um, or a rating even, on Epic Marketplace. Um, and I am gonna continue development uh, when I have time on the code plugin, which would mean it would be integrated in the camera within Unreal. You just use a C bar to change it from normal depth of field to um, fake, well, with, to anamorphic depth of field. Uh, the main th other thing to note as well, when you're actually viewing through a camera, if we add a cine camera here, and we'll look through it. So um, the way this works, uh, it has some limitations, uh, which I want to show you. So um, inside the camera, we just have to disable constraint to aspect ratio, number one. So the way this samples the scene color and scene depth, constraint aspect ratio tends to mess with it. Um, so as you can see, we've got there. Now the thing is at the moment, it's actually applying double um, depth of field at the moment. So what we need to do is go into the camera and we want to change manual to disable. So now we're only seeing the materials depth of field. As you can see now it's much faster. And through the camera, once we're there, then we hit there. So about that's about a nice spot. And we can just go on to head and set our focus distance to the right value. So now we've got there and it's working fairly well. Um, one of the main things down at the bottom here, we've got the depth blur. So this basically blurs the um, depth of the scene so that um, any sharp edges, you'll, you'll see if I knock this down to point 0.1, you can see on the edges here, um, we're getting kind of like a, a really sharp edge and we're seeing some of the detail come through because it's not perfect um, with the post process. So what we want to do that this kind of just blurs that out so that we get a kind of a more natural um, feeling to it. And you can keyframe this as well if you want to change it. So if we like, you know, we can go crazy um, and kind of get a really blurry, it, it basically just erodes the mask um, so that it feels a bit softer. It works well in some situations and other situations you might want to turn it down a bit um, with really thin geometry and stuff like that. Uh, so that's that. Now, one last thing I want to mention in terms of uh, things to look out for is screen result, uh, screen percentage. So in the editor, um, by default, your screen percentage is usually when you boot up 
around 50 to 60. I think it sets automatically or something like that. Um, you want to set it to 100 for this uh, to work p properly because in Unreal Engine 5, I don't know why, um, but the depth, when you sample the depth uh, of the scene, it for some reason has a different size to the scene color. Um, and I can't seem to fix that. So basically you, you need to head to 100 screen percentage and when you render out in movie render queue, um, that should work fine. Or it has, does work fine for me because uh, generally it sets the full screen percentage or resolution that you're rendering um, when outputting. If you happen to accidentally change it, I'll give an example of what happens when we pump this down to 50. So as you can see, the scene color resizes, um, but the depth mask does not. So if you do run into that situation, you can generally just um, you can generally just bump it back up to the correct size, and that will generally fix it. Although sometimes it, every now and again, it didn't for me, and I just restarted the editor, and then that would work. So yeah, hope you enjoyed my little um, little example of this anamorphic depth of field, and. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it.